And God needed to send His only begotten Son in the flesh so that we could see Him, so that He could be seen, so that He could be touched. He could be touched, He could be felt. People could lean on Him and He could touch people. He reached out and touched them. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. And all of that was done because we had to have. He did it for us. For us. He did it for us. Jesus had glory in eternity long before he showed up on this world, on this earth. He was, he was in, 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 the, in the triune God. He was there. He was in the beginning. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. He was God. But God, He was needed with us. He was needed to be in and amongst His people. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. And so God did all of that for us, for you and for me. I want to read a couple of scriptures here this morning. Start with me, and um, let's see, we're going to go to Isaiah first, just for a couple of scriptures, then we're going to go over to Luke's Gospel one more time. Amen. Yes. For us, get a hold of this, for us. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And I like the uh, thrust of the cantata, and uh, really 9-2, we don't have it up here, but I'm going to read it. Isaiah 9, 2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. They're going to see a light. Every year I watch the uh, Mass at St. Peter's. If you ever watch it, you'll see, they'll read this verse. Every year the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. And the half of them don't have a clue what's going on, but I get blessed every time they read it. Say hallelujah. Jesus is the light of the world. Give them, Lord, a big hand. Come on. Now, down to verse 6. We're starting on verse 6 this morning. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For a child will be born to us, and a son will be given to us. I want you to notice that. A child will be born to us. The whole world. And specifically, the people of God, and the physical people, Israel. A child will be born to us. Jesus is owned by all of us. Say hallelujah. He came for us. He was born for us. He died for us. Say hallelujah. That's, a, that's phenomenal. For us. Then we break it down even on a, to a lesser degree, to an individual degree. He died, for, he died for me. Born for me, died for me. But it's for us. And we forget that. And this blessing is for the whole world. Unfortunately, the whole world doesn't receive it. Jesus is either loved or he's hated. Either way. There's no in-betweens. Well, maybe. No, there's no maybe. We either love Jesus or you hate him. Either one. Because he is the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. He's a good man. No, he's not. He's God. Well, he can't be God and in the flesh of the same. Yes, he can. He's the only one that can. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So he came for us. Came for us. God sent him for us. Specifically. That's one of the reasons why we give presents at Christmas. Because we show our love. God showed his love for us. He gave us Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Back to the word here. Uh, a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. And the government will rest upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Eternal Father, the Prince of Peace. Wonderful. Means miraculous. It means Jesus brings wonders. Whenever God is moving, wonders occur. Wonders. You wonder about what happened. What is this all about? You wonder. Why? It's made, he's wonderful. We used to sing a song years ago when I was a child. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. How many remember that? 
Counselor, Prince of Peace. This is, this is where they pulled it from, right here. Mighty God is He. Amen. And this was told prophetically. Jesus would be wonderful. A counselor. The Holy Spirit's our counselor. Mighty God. He is the mighty God. Hallelujah. Saving me, keeping me. That's the old song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you know what? People have to understand that all these are all titles for Jesus. He has numerous titles. because And he fulfills every single prophetic word. The other reason, the last reason why, not only just for us, but Jesus had to come in the flesh was because it was prophesied. Because the prophets spoke this. Now here's God up in heaven and he, sent, he speaks to the prophets and he says, speak this word around. Just speak this word out to my people. When God speaks a prophetic word and when it became canonized, which means written down, God is obligated to carry that out. Now all the devil had to do to crush the whole plan of God was to kill Jesus. If Jesus had died, the plan of God would have been crushed. Say, thank you, Jesus, you're alive. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you came for us. Hallelujah. So God's word has to be fulfilled. It has to be. I've said this many times, I want to say it again. Every single prophetic word that's spoken prior to the coming of Christ had to be fulfilled, and most of them have been already. I don't know if you know that. The vast majority of prophecy has already been fulfilled. There's a few left, a very few, that haven't been fulfilled yet. But God is going to do it in His time and His place. Say hallelujah. So Jesus had to come in the flesh because it was spoken, it was prophesied, but he came for us and to us. Say hallelujah. Amen. In other words, there's something in this for everybody. There's a blessing in Jesus for the whole world. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. The whole world. Amen. So he came, the Bible says, exactly at the right time. That's right, it was. We don't understand it, but we know that God knew it. The right time. And so he came out of eternity into time and space. Now when we leave this earth and we go to heaven, we're going to leave time as we know it. And we're going to enter eternity. Think of that. You're going to enter eternity. Jesus came from eternity into time and space and then he left he went back to eternity and we're headed there say hallelujah we're headed to eternity give the lord a hand hallelujah glory to god so he's a wonder he's mighty god he's prince of peace we haven't seen peace yet but we will in the millennium in the future we're going to see absolute peace say hallelujah glory to god and we're going to see, once again, in the future, we're going to see a different Jesus than we saw previously. A totally different Jesus. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, he's going to rule and reign. He will never be mistreated. He will never be put down. He will never be cursed. He will never be hollered at. Say, thank you, Jesus. Put your hands up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He will be in absolute control absolute charge hallelujah we only get a little picture in the new testament of jesus capacity to get upset how many of you know jesus is a man and he had a personality okay and when he went to the temple and he saw the money changers and the people trading for the sacrifices he got thoroughly upset he got ripping mad and he went to town and turned everything upside down. What, what's that show us? Jesus has, an, God has another side to him too. God can get mad, God can get upset, say hallelujah. That's right, God can get upset, amen. Jesus got upset, turned everything upside down and nobody stopped him. 
guess what? Nobody could stop him. Say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus came to us and for us. And he was the light of the world. The light of the world. I love that. And he is a counselor, a mighty God, eternal father, prince of peace, just like you see up there. Wonderful counselor. Hallelujah. And that was just for us. Hallelujah. He came to us and for us. Mary and Joseph did not have a clue. I'm going to end with this. That they were going to be called by God to carry out this plan. How many of you noticed, have you noticed in your Christian life that God doesn't tell you everything? Hallelujah. He doesn't tell you everything. <laughs> he doesn't. He just tells you what you need to know step at a time. That's what he tells you. And so all of a sudden, they had appearances from the angels. And God said, I have a job for you to do. And they felt like all of us. Who? Me? I really don't want this. But God said, do it. And when you do it, you get blessed. Say hallelujah. When you fulfill the will of God, you're blessed. And salvation comes. Say hallelujah. God wants to be real to you this morning in a different way. Let's stand.